What is up, Watch Fam? Happy Saturday, and welcome to this week's uh, episode of Ask TNH Live. I am Christian from Theo and Harris, and today, just as every Saturday, we're going to be jumping into some live conversation and watch talk with our Instagram followers. Let's do it. All right, well, let's do a quick wristwatch check. Uh, I am wearing my personal Rolex Datejust reference 1601. Uh, definitely the watch and the reference uh, that I feel most passionate about uh, for many reasons. I know I've gone through this before. Um, I guess primarily uh, because it's my first watch, right? So for me, it's, 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 it's that watch. It's the watch that got you into watches. Uh, so I look at it. And I think about everything that's happened to me in the last three years, and I love it, you know, and I think about all of the awkward conversations and all the bad days and all the good days, and it's like my best friend, you know, really weird way. On the other side, uh, it's it's the merit of the watch. If you guys have owned a Datejust, or, or if you guys just understand the Datejust, <clears throat> it's, it's, it's size with its case and all the proportions. Uh, it's substantial, surely, but it's never overwhelming. They're endless variations. You're talking about just endless dials and hands, and, and, and there's tritium, and there's radium, and, and there's so much going on. Uh, once again, you guys have heard this so many times, but uh, the Datejust is just one of the one, most wonderful watches in the world. So uh, that's what I'm wearing today. So let's get into some questions. Um, thoughts on the new swatch? Uh, if you mean the Hodinkee swatch, we'll be releasing a video about that very shortly. Uh, Hodinkee just released uh, their newest collaboration with a watch manufacturer. Uh, they've done a few before with Vacheron Constantine, with, with uh, Skipper, the, the Hoyer Skipper, uh, which is a re-edition or, or a reimagined uh, iteration of a classic Hoyer. Uh, I did a full video about that, if you guys haven't already seen it. Uh, you guys should definitely check it out. Uh, please put the link in the description for them to uh, take a look at my thoughts about it. Uh, but Hodinkee is continuing, you know, they're continuing their, their collaborations. I think that they're probably never gonna stop. It's a wonderful idea. Um, I really think that it, it makes news every time. You know, it makes, it makes good news. Uh, every time something comes out. Uh, it's one of the few Hodinkee articles that I always feel inclined to read because I'm interested in, in, in why they did something. You know, I'm not so interested in a Hodinkee System 51. You know, it's not, you know, it's not so interesting, but I want to know why. I want to know why they made it that way. Uh, and I want to know if it's commendable or if I'm going to rip their ass open on, uh, on Instagram. And this one was a cool one. Uh, nothing... Nothing compelling, I don't think, but I think a wonderful, valuable watch uh, that, to many people, is uh, is a great opportunity to own a Hodinkee collaboration. You know, because they're so unattainable. Um, you know, the Vacheron being, I think, in the 40s or 60s, something ridiculous. Uh, you know, than all the other watches. So yeah, I think it's it's a cool it's a cool watch. Do I have any uh, any turnographs? Yes, I do. Uh, Rolex introduced the turnograph line in the late 40s, I believe. Uh, it's a very cool iteration of a Datejust. Uh, it has it has this this very funky tool bezel. Uh, you guys can please put a photo here uh, of the watch. We currently have one in stock in two tone in uh, in a beautiful uh, taupe or bronze kind of dial. Really beautiful piece. I think it's going to be collectible one day. Recently acquired my first watch, a Longines Quest Heritage. What should be my next step? I'm thinking about a Rolex. Uh, Datejust. Uh, definitely. I think that a Rolex Datejust will be a wonderful introduction into vintage. It's a watch that uh, doesn't just get your foot wet, but really uh, uh, really gets you uh, you know submerged uh, in the vintage world. Uh, more importantly, it's a watch that you'll never regret buying. I think it's a watch that you'll look back on and say, that was my first vintage watch, and I wear it regularly. So that to me is very important. So yeah, I'd love to help you out with that when you're ready. Why do you think there's so much value in regular uh, regular off the mill chrome classes? Yeah, good, good run of the mill, I think you meant. Uh, good question. Um, so so we released a really interesting watch yesterday on, on the Theo and Harris shop. It's a Lanco chronograph. Uh, it's an oversized watch, 37 millimeters, cool beveled case, uh, uh, beautiful uh, beautiful dial. You know, it's kind of a creamy dial, well, a white dial that turned creamy uh, and a, um, a, a black a tachometer and black subdials that turn brown. Uh, we paid a tremendous, a tremendous, we paid bigger premiums, but we paid a very uh, uh, a heavy premium for it. Uh, and, uh, and and we offered it yesterday, you know, for sale on the TNH shop. And we got a ton of, well, a ton of support uh, and a ton of flack for this. It, it was a really controversial topic. Uh, and the, the topic was uh, the valuation um, of, I suppose, your quote unquote, you know, unknown uh, chronographs, particularly in chrome cases. 
And I think that, I mean, you, you can debate this particular watch, but I think the more interesting conversation is how do you value a watch? And it's, it's a, a vintage watch. And it's a very, you know, tricky process. Um, f- most importantly, or the first note that comes to mind is... For people that have been in the vintage watch world for months or years, like so many of you have, uh, many of you guys have been in this game longer than I have. I've only been in the vintage watch game for four years, uh, three years professionally. So many of you guys are, you know, way, you know, way longer than that. Um, but one of the things to keep in mind, and which is hard to take a step back, but remember that the prices of the past uh, are not, you know, reflective, you know, of the prices of today. Because you remembered when a date just was two thousand dollars doesn't mean the date just at 3500 is overpriced or overpaying. Maybe your perception is tainted, and I understand that. Maybe you can't get beyond spending 2000 on a date just because you remember when it was two grand. Uh, but that does not mean that, like I said, 3100 3200 4000 is overpriced. Uh, in my opinion, there is going to be a vintage watch market bubble. Yes, I think that uh, prices of vintage watches will explode. But I think that we're going to see a much, much, much uh, larger uptick in value before then. And I think that the rock bottom price that is going to be realized after the explosion is higher than the values today in the watches that we deal in. Uh, Tudors, Rolexes, chronographs, things like that. Uh, there are other markets that are different. You know, there are, there are other markets, uh, you know, other sub-markets, uh, I don't want to Call any call any sub markets out, uh, but uh, certain brands that I think you know are way overpriced as it is. But when we're talking about Rolexes and Tudors and these vintage chronographs, uh, we're talking about and not to dim, not, not to not to belittle these watches, but they really are uh, uh, entry level pieces. Uh, and then what happens with these watches uh, is because of the large, just these massive uh, 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 bubbles in their prices and submariners and in GMTs and things like that of a gilt dial, for instance. A gilt dial in a GMT could demand, you know, 15 grand. A gilt dial in Datejust demands 800 or 1,000. You know, so even if that number goes from 800 or 1,000 to 3,000, it's nowhere near 30. And 30 may pop down to 12 you know, but the date just is still pretty safe. And that's why I like these watches. They're relatively low, low risk. More people can afford them. You have so many more people uh, to control that market. Whereas when you're talking about these super high-end watches, your buyer base is so much smaller that small changes in opinion can destroy a watch. You know, if there are only really 150 people out there that realistically want, you know, or think about and, and, and drive the market for, you know, uh, uh, you know, guilt explorers, for instance, or for argument's sake, uh, uh, it doesn't take much of a difference. It doesn't take much of a tide shift to ruin that market. Two sales of a vintage Explorer can change the way the Explorer market runs. Look at the Paul Newman market. It's strong maybe right now because of this recent sale, but that Paul Newman market got real weak two years ago uh, after a huge uptick, you know, and once again, because of two or three sales, it doesn't take a lot because these are super specialized, you know, uh, 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 consumer bases. So a little rumor or a little, you know, a little, you know, whisper of, of trouble in these markets does either a lot, you know, to help them or a lot to hurt them. Uh, so back to my point, ultimately, I think that because these are entry level watches and the the, the masses can afford them, uh, they're safe watches. They are, you know. So uh, so I stand I stand behind them. You know, I told someone yesterday uh, one of the reasons that 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 I think it's it's very uh, truthful buying from Theo and Harris uh, is because one not only are we not going anywhere, but the whole business is built on a personal relationship with our consumers. The whole business is based off of uh, the, the 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 trust and the you know like love equity I have built or we have built as a team, not I, uh, in the hearts of our viewers. Right. So to undermine that for as people view it, a small extra margin of a few hundred dollars would be ridiculous. You know, if you're gonna rob the bank, you know, you don't do it for two grand. You see my point? And we're not, you know, it's not even like we're considering, you know, uh, you know, busting the bank. You know, we're really trying to build something much, much larger than a $200 premium on a vintage chronograph. Not the point. It's not the point. And if you don't see that, you know, if you don't see that and you follow Theo and Harris, then we just disagree. 
That's it. Like, we just fundamentally, and that's cool. Like, have your opinion. But I will debate you any day of the week, every day, or how about every day of the week, as I did on YouTube yesterday for hours. Literally. I went back and forth with people that tried to, and once again, like, you know, I'm a professional because I do this for a living, but there are plenty of amateurs that have equal, if not more, understanding and knowledge about the vintage watch market, you know, as, as I do. Right, I, I totally concede that. So many people out there that you know kind of want to not just not just give their opinion, but influence a market or give really really strong criticism when their opinions are largely unfounded, you know, or or they're founded in nostalgia of when prices were lower, you know. So sorry, I just don't really respect that opinion very much. Thank you all for watching. Please follow us on Instagram at Theo and Harris uh, to actually be on these live videos with our Instagram fans, and I will see you all on Monday.